Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Let's talk about these iPhones. iPhone 11, 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max. It's going to be hard to figure out how to say that a bunch. First, let's start with the 11. In order to do that, we need to jump back to last year in the iPhone 10R. Now, I was a big critic of the iPhone 10R. I did come around when the phone actually was released and I started to use it. I still have it over there. Uh, but one thing that really bothered me about the iPhone 10R was the $749 price tag. I thought, okay, so we're getting a slightly less uh, fancy, slightly dumbed down, slightly, uh, slightly, you know, just a, more of a budget iPhone, right? Uh, and I know you're out there arguing, well, there are budget phones, just send them to this much dollars. Okay, right, whatever. I'm not talking about Android or any other phone. I'm talking about the iPhones. All right. The iPhone 10R at 749 to me was just not quite put in the right place when it came to its pricing structure last year. And lo and behold, when Apple came out and announced the iPhone 11 yesterday, I was impressed with the phone overall. I, just the stuff that the added camera lens by itself and the things that that camera lens can do that improve on the iPhone 10R are worth the price of admission in my opinion especially since that price of admission has been lowered from the aforementioned 749 to 699 this year apple actually like did they listen to me i don't know uh, no no they didn't listen to me but they seemed to get their mind around the idea that they needed to have a phone in that price range a new phone in that price range and so they i guess have decided to do it dave lee made a great video today about how much money <laughs> apple is actually losing by chopping off that 50 dollars. and i'm gonna i'm gonna link it down in the description below because it's a really good it's a really good video uh and you should really check it out but um or maybe I'll link it at the end screen. I'll link it at the end screen, so just stick around. According to Dave Lee's math, and you know, don't blame me if it's wrong, Apple's gonna lose $1.3 billion by selling the iPhone 11 $50 cheaper. But what they did yesterday with their services, they, they I was afraid the services were gonna be ungodly expensive, like 20 bucks a month or something like that, but when the, when they came out with Apple Arcade at $4.99 for the entire family, when they came out with Apple TV Plus, which I thought was going to be a complete disaster, at $4.99 for everybody with the option, if you buy an Apple device, to get a free year subscription to Apple TV Plus, uh, then it starts to make sense. Apple used to make the majority of their money on selling iPhones. And I think at this point, that, sh that horse has left the barn. We're not going to sell as many iPhones as we as we have in the past. And that's for two reasons. One, uh, the iPhones are getting more and more expensive, although this price dip is a nice surprise. But also, iPhones last so much longer than other phones. You know, in, during the Apple TV Plus uh, launch event, Apple went out of their way to say they have 1 billion devices active in the world. 1 billion devices is a lot. You take 4.99 times 1 billion. Um, he, that's billions of dollars? Math? Don't know. But anyway, the iPhone 11, I mean, the two things that really jumped out at me were the camera and what, what you could do with that, if for no other reason, pet portrait mode. <laughs> I mean, but it was really impressive. They focused the first entire part of their event on the iPhone 11 and what it could do instead of moving past that and getting to the pro phones. They just said they it seemed like they wanted to tell us this is a real live iPhone. Specs wise, is it a huge upgrade from last year's iPhone 10R? No, but in terms of what the camera can do, and especially in terms of what that price can do, Apple made a really, really good move with this iPhone 11. I do have to say that I think they missed the boat with the colors. Uh, the pastel colors are just not gonna appeal to like half of the population of the world, in my opinion. I don't think I, wanted, I would wanna carry around a pastel phone. Your mileage may vary. They also have kept the iPhone XR around and are pricing it at $599, which this is still 
an amazing phone, amazing battery life, really fast, really responsive. It is a very, very good phone. And now you get this phone for $599. Uh, that's going to help Apple get into even more people's pockets. And then, if you think about the iPhone 8 still sticking around, starting at 449 this is the first time that Apple's pricing structure has actually made some kind of sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but it actually, you know, especially on the lower end, makes some sense. Let's talk about where it might not make as much sense. The iPhone 11 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now, people have complained about the name... I am over it. Whatever. You know, Apple comes up with stupid names for all their products. The screen on the iPhone 11 Pro is called the Super Retina XDR. And none of that makes sense. N none of that makes sense. Those are all things that Apple made up. For one thing, I have to, I have to say it. Now, I'm not backtracking on the fact that, by and large, the giant camera module is ugly. It is ugly. Uh, but what I had seen in the renders and the dummies and all that kind of stuff that people have been able to to put in front of us via YouTube and other places, it looked so ugly. And it looked really so unApple like Apple has always had like a certain kind of elegance to their design. And the giant square on the back of the phone just did not seem elegant. But I will say this. When I saw how the glass tapers up and then is like a flat pool across the across the camera module and the frosted glass, the matte glass underneath, I was it doesn't look it, it looks it looks elegant, okay? It looks elegant whether or not it's your kind of elegant, whether or not it's enough to save it from being generally ugly. That's uh, that's personal opinion. And uh, my personal opinion is I still would like to see, have something nicer, but this looks better than I thought it would. Uh, also, the midnight green color like gave me goosebumps in old style Apple ways for reasons I can't really explain. I can't really explain why. But did they earn the moniker Pro with these phones? I've gone on record as saying the iPhones have always been Pro because professional people could use them to create professional quality content right now they're saying pro can they really back it up as i said with the camera on the 11 the camera on the 11 pro and pro max uh what it's able to do is kind of amazing i have i have been hoping that this year if apple gets anything right that they will get the camera right in such a way that they can move up in the ranks again to challenge for best of class in camera and I think based on what I saw yesterday, which, of course, is not the same thing as having the phone in your hands. When I have the phone in my hands, I will then make a decision as to whether or not the camera is as cool as I think it is. Uh, but the night mode looked really good. The different focal lengths and being able to see the entire the entirety of your picture and choose from those different focal lengths was an I'd never seen it done that way. Maybe it's been done that way before. I haven't seen it. I thought it was really great. And Apple's interface is always very easy to use. So I was very impressed with what they showed with the camera for the Pro and the Pro Max. What really blew me away, and this comes from me being a video guy, okay, uh, and, and doing these things. Filmic is a company that makes apps. Uh, they, their most well-known app is Filmic Pro. It's, a, it's an app that you can use with the iPhone to give the camera more features. And a couple of people from Filmic came out and showed us features on the next version of their app. And that's when my head exploded. Because with Filmic Pro in this next version, you're going to be able to choose from all four major camera lenses on the iPhone, on the iPhone to create whatever vi video you're working on. So like, I mean, from a YouTube standpoint, if you're a vlogger and you want to be able to like have yourself be seen, but also, you know, the, the outside, the surroundings of you, I mean, so you select the selfie camera and you select one of the cameras on the back and you're, you're there, you're there. Uh, if you want to do an interview, you set the camera, but you just, you set the iPhone between the two people. And you get, but I, there are just so many possibilities. Uh, this is something that Apple has, 
Apple made their name in at least the procreative world on giving people opportunities to do things that they had not been able to do before. And as far as I know, like what they're doing with this camera has the potential to be really groundbreaking. Now, I know there are Pixel owners out there and Android fans and everything like that. And yes, there are plenty of great cameras on plenty of great Android phones. I've got my LG V50 here, and I think that the camera and all the creative options that the LG V50 has are some of the best in the Android space, perhaps best of 2019, but we'll talk about that later. All I'm saying is Apple came out and they kept the prices of these two phones the same as last year. I think everybody knows or expects or we've been told that next year's phone is going to be the really big deal. Next year's phone is going to change form factor. We're going to get rid of the notch. It's going to fly to the moon. It's going to do all kinds of things that everybody's always wanted to do with an iPhone. And this year's phone was an afterthought. In some ways, yes. Is there any kind of it's still the same body, but much better looking design, in my opinion, when you talk about the glass back. There's not much improved in terms of how the phone works overall. Although Face ID is supposed to be better and, you know, have more angles. So if it's if you got the thing sitting on the desk here, you don't have to, like, bend over it in order to get the Face ID to work. And that that that's worth the price of admission, in my opinion, right there. Apple could have jacked the prices still. They could have done what Apple has typically done and just raised the prices, you know, another 50 or 100 bucks. But they didn't do it. Something happened to Apple this year. Something happened to Apple, and they actually seemed to start to figure it out. They dropped prices on many devices. I'm just talking about the iPhones right now, but they dropped prices on, you know, the, the Apple Watch Series 3. They dropped prices on the, I, well, the iPad that they introduced has always been a low price device. So the fact that the iPhone lineup now looks like this, iPhone 8 starting at 849 and going up, the 10R starting at 599 and going up, the 11 starting at 699 and going up, and then you've got your big boys at 999 and 1099. So let's let's be clear. There's nothing earth shattering about what these iPhones are. There's nothing that really makes these iPhones worlds different than the previous iPhone. If you have an iPhone 10s and you're not somebody who goes out and buys a new phone every year because you want the new phone every year, you don't need to upgrade to the iPhone 11 Pro or Pro Max. If you have an iPhone 10R, you don't need to go get an iPhone 11, although I would say the camera abilities on both phones are, to me, and I'm not really a camera guy when it comes to phones, but to me, they're pretty compelling. So Apple somehow got it right this year. They got their price structures in order. They gave us really good, solid upgrades and on top of incremental up upgrades. We didn't get any fancy bells and whistles. We didn't get the reverse wireless charging. We didn't get uh, you know, a headphone jack back. We didn't get any big new features. We did get very solid improvements on the previous phones and a price structure that is moving the needle more toward sanity. I don't know. What do you think? Were you impressed at all with the iPhones? I mean, I know there are a lot of people out there who say, who are just going to say, well, no, it didn't do this and does that. And it doesn't do that. But I'm trying to look at this realistically. Like, what have they really offered us? And is it valuable? And my answer is yes. You can hope for every feature that is rumored at one time or another. You can hope to get rid of the notch. You can hope to do all those things. And... Maybe all those things will happen next year. But this year, Apple has put out a solid line of phones. And if you're somebody who has an older phone and it's time for you to upgrade, these are very worthy and they're priced in a way that is much more reasonable than I think Apple has been in the past. So anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments. I I'm ready for a boisterous discussion. But in my mind, Apple got it right this year when it comes to the iPhones. I did a reaction video to the whole event and that video you can see like right well it's popping up somewhere <laughs> and then i have an entire playlist of my apple coverage from 2019 that you can also click on like here or here one of the two uh so do click on those and and sort of check it out and see see if you find anything else that you like or see if you find anything else that makes you angry i mean maybe angry is your thing <laughs> once again 
My name is Jason. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.